A Georgia high school football coach has been fired after what the district is calling an undisclosed condition after an investigation, but all signs are pointing to one factor. We will talk about that in just a second. Welcome everybody to Not By Slate News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you in the news of the end times and so much more. Thanks for spending part of your day with me today, reminding you as always that we walk by faith not by sight. And for somebody like me, it's kind of my only option. I remind you guys as well, if you enjoy and appreciate the work I do here, consider blessing my ministry with a generous donation. There's a couple of ways you can help me out. One easy way, just click the super thanks button down below on this video here. That's how you can tip me with a one-time donation of any amount. And whatever you can contribute, it helps and goes a long way. doesn't matter how small or how large or become a premium member of Not By Sight News today. Join my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash Not By Sight News. Link in the description. When you guys join the Patreon, you get all the videos before they ever hit my main YT platform. I always take care of the Patreon members first. You guys will also get the alerts for all the videos, which trust me, does not happen with my main YT platform. It's a big reason the videos really don't get many views. Nobody knows I'm posting consistent content. You can also comment over there completely censorship free and even send me DMs. So check it out. Again, it's patreon.com slash not by site news. Link in the description. Big thank you. To everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so, thank you as well. Your generosity greatly appreciated. So what's going on in Georgia? This is at Tattnall County High School where the school's football coach, Isaac Farrell, has now been fired, has been relieved of his duties, according to a statement that was put out by Superintendent Kristen Waters. Now, this is what she is saying, that... They conducted an investigation into an incident that occurred after a football game that took place on Friday, November 3rd, while the team was traveling. Now, she has not indicated what that incident was, but I'm going to point to what I believe it was in just a second, because there's another incident we need to speak of here. But she goes on here in the statement to say that she would not comment any further as to what this incident was. Uh, in regards to their investigation as they're still gathering information and so on and so forth. But apparently this was such a major issue that it caused them to put out a statement that said that in the best interest of our students and for the safety and well-being of them as well, safety and well-being, we feel that is in the best interest of of the school, of the players to proceed with a new football coach for the 2024 and 2025 season. Okay, so that's what they're saying. But let's rewind back a little bit more. We got this unnamed incident on November 3rd after the game when the team was traveling that involved the coach in some way. But let's talk about what happened on October 24th. Because on October 24th, head coach Isaac Farrell hosted a baptism that took place right there on the field, at the school, after practice. In fact, he brought in a Pastor Gary Few of Rehoboth Missionary Baptist Church in Claxton, Georgia, brought him over there, and he helped to baptize 20 players that day. Now, this was circulating around on social media at the time, and, and many of the comments were very positive about the baptisms, but then there were many that were negative too. But for a lot of the parents here, They were very happy to see their kids, you know, willingly making this decision for themselves to get baptized. They couldn't be more proud. But then what happened? The Freedom From Religion Foundation, the FFRF, right? Those group of atheists that always like to uh, jump in in these situations, had sent a complaint letter down to Tattnall High School to let them know that the coach was hosting an unconstitutional baptism on school grounds and that this was you know, coercing players. It was pushing his religion on them. And I'm always just stunned by this because they always say this in all of these statements that this is somehow the coach pushing or forcing a student to get baptized. I don't think anybody was forced to get baptized. This was a voluntary thing. If you didn't want to get baptized, you didn't have to. And even in the statement letter too that was sent by the FFRF, they claimed that, you know, Students were forced to be baptized in order to play football. Now, that wasn't the case at all, but this is what they frame it as. Now, 
The superintendent responded because people were saying, look, you fired him because of the baptism. Is it, she's saying, no, that's not why we fired him. That's not why we fired the head coach because of the baptisms, even though that's the entire complaint here about what the atheist sent from the very beginning. But no, no, she says that's a separate investigation. We are investigating the baptisms. That's, that's a separate deal. But that's not the reason that Coach Farrell was terminated. Again, she's pointing back to this, whatever this November 3rd incident is. Um, and, it, you know, we find out more details about that. I'll, I'll bring that to you guys in a separate video. Now, interestingly enough, although Isaac Farrell will no longer be coaching the team in football, uh, he remains listed as a teacher at the school. Now, how long that lasts, you know, we don't know. They said they're still investigating the baptisms. And so whatever they determine from that, um, you know, I, I guess that could potentially cause him to lose his teaching job too. But uh, this is going to be an interesting back and forth here. You know, will the coach try and get his job back? I mean, how many incidents have we seen with football coaches, high school football coaches around the country, you know, that have been terminated for either praying, you know, during a game or after or whatever the case. And, you know, there was that one that the Supreme Court had got involved with. So uh, it's shown more signs of leaning towards the coaches in these situations. Whether that happens with Farrell or not, I don't know. But look, one thing is for sure, you know, we know that all these individuals are very hostile towards Christianity. And I welcome any of you, you know, if you're somebody that attends Tattnall High School and you would like to offer your thoughts on the situation and and Coach Farrell and what's happened here, please feel free to do so because this is absolutely crazy uh, what's going on right now. Coach didn't deserve to lose his job. I'll put more info for you in the description. What I want to do right now, though, something I do on all these videos, and let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. Of course, I talk about the end time Bible prophecy headlines, keep you guys up to speed and everything else going on. I do it because, yes, we're in the last days, really the final hours. And Christ is coming soon. For anybody watching right now, if you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge that you are a sinner. That's something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. As he died and rose again for you and me, he paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin, which means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Don't forget the links to donate to the ministry are there as well. Join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash notbysightnews link in the description. Or just hit the super thanks button down below on this video here where you can tip me with a one-time donation. It's all a great blessing. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.